Hey everybody, I am in the really cool town of Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm here today because supposedly there's going to be a cattle drive that comes right down this street in the middle of town. I don't see them coming yet, so while we're waiting, I have a question to ask you. Have you ever dreamed of what you want to do or what you want to be when you grow up? Hmm. I could be a veterinarian. Or perhaps I could be a welder. Oh, I know. I would love to be a lead ukulele player in a Hawaiian band. Maybe even a pilot. Oh, wait a minute. I think I see him coming. Come on, let's go check it out. Today, I want to tell you about a little boy who knew exactly what he wanted to be when he grew up. A cowboy. And have I got a story for you. This little boy was born in 1864 in the little town of Oak Hill, Missouri. His parents, Mr. and Mrs. Russell, named him Charles Marion Russell. Sometimes they called him Charles. Sometimes they called him by his initials, CM. Some friends even called him Kid, but most of the time they called him Charlie, Charlie Russell. Now Charlie would have loved this, being outside, missing school on a school day. You see, Charlie Russell hated school. Most days when he was old enough to get away with it, he would skip school and head down to the docks. He would watch the boats steam in. He would listen to the stories of the travelers. He loved rubbing elbows with fur traders and explorers. And from listening to these stories, he knew exactly what he wanted to do when he grew up. He wanted to head west to Montana and be a cowboy. It was all he could think about. He read everything he could find on the Wild West. He sketched pictures on anything he could find. He imagined what the Wild West would be like. Horses, buffalo, cowboys, and Indians. And when he wasn't reading or listening or sketching, he was sculpting. He often stole his sister's bee wax to make tiny models of horses. When he ran out of wax, he used clay from the nearby brickyard. A friend of the family was so impressed with his little sculptures that he gave him some beeswax of his very own. After that day, he would carry a little ball of wax in his pocket. He loved modeling the little piece of wax as his friends would chat. They would be shocked at how quickly he could form the wax into a horse or a wolf. Charlie Russell's dad really wanted Charlie to follow into the family business, the Oak Hill Fire Brick and Tile Works but he felt Charlie was going to need to get more serious about his school and quit talking about being a cowboy all the time. He decided he would give Charlie a real taste of living in the Wild West. When Charlie turned 16, he was allowed to go to Montana and work on a sheep farm. He was confident that a few weeks as a sheep farming would get Charlie's attention. It was hard work without a lot of luxuries. After just a few weeks, Charlie realized that he didn't care much for sheep ranching, but that didn't mean he didn't still love the grassy plains, mountain ranges, elk, moose, and deer. And he still longed to be a cowboy. He met a fellow by the name of Jake Hoover, who was an experienced hunter. He took Charlie Russell under his wing and taught him all the ways of the Wild West. Jake lived in a cabin, but spent most of his time in the woods. It was the best year of young Charlie's life. Jake taught him secrets of nature, the habits of animals, and how to read Indian sign language. Charlie's desire to become a cowboy finally came true when he got hired on as a night herder. Charlie was to watch the herd during the night. 
As the cowboys began to settle down for the evening, Charlie would listen to their stories before heading out to keep watch over the herd. This allowed Charlie plenty of time during the day to paint what he saw. Again, he sketched on just about anything, often adding just a little watercolor. Most of the time, he just gave his drawings away. Charlie's life was about to change. In 1887, Montana experienced one of the worst winters in history. Between the extremely cold temperatures and the very deep snow, the cows were having a hard time being able to dig through the rock hard drifts to get to the grass below. The herds were devastated. One of Charlie's cowboy friends was to write a letter to the ranch owner to tell him about the condition of the herd but he was having a hard time coming up with the right words. Charlie made a little painting on the back of a shirt box, about the size of a postcard, and he titled it, Waiting for the Chinook. A Chinook is a thawing wind. The cowboy sent the owner the little painting and the boss completely understood what they were going through. As you can see, the cow is just skin and bones. You can clearly see his ribs. He has icicles hanging from his nose and mouth. And what is circling him? A pack of wolves. Some are pacing. Some are just sitting in wait. Can you see the steam coming from the wolf's breath? I don't think this cow stands a chance. The ranch owner showed the little watercolor painting to his friends and acquaintances, and he eventually put it in a shop window in Helena, Montana. After this, Charlie began to be asked a lot to paint pictures. Charlie just painted what he saw. He sketched and painted to help him remember and to share with his friends about his experiences. He recorded the weather with his paintings. He recorded encounters with livestock and wild animals with his paintings. He painted the people he saw and his paintings often told a story of rowdy cowboys going into a hotel or saloon without knocking, or of cowboys playing a trick by tying a string of cans onto a dog's tail that gets the horses and chickens spooked. He painted a frightened horse ruining lunch for everyone on the trail, and the cook doesn't seem too happy about it. There were paintings of cowboys doing what they do best by returning a stray to the herd. Charlie Russell had a real passion for Native Americans. He lived for several years with a tribe of Indians from the Blackfeet Nation. He learned their language and stories and remembered with great detail the observations he had made. He wanted to show their bravery, their courage, their customs, and their dignity. In 1882, Charles Russell married a beautiful young woman by the name of Nancy. He was 32 years old and she was only 18, but she had already lived a pretty hard life. Nancy was born in 1878 on a Kentucky tobacco farm. Her father abandoned them and her mother did the best she could do to raise Nancy. Her mother remarried and they moved to Montana but her stepfather was rarely around. When Nancy turned 16, her mother died. Nancy was left all alone. A kind family, the Roberts, allowed Nancy to move in with them and be their housekeeper. The Roberts were friends of Charlie Russell. They introduced the two and 11 months later, Charlie and Nancy were married. Charlie Russell's marriage to Nancy proved a turning point in his career. She loved his artwork and thought he didn't charge nearly enough for him. Charlie said that his sweet wife was a major contributor to his success. He said without her, he'd probably have never attempted to soar or reach any height further than to make a few pictures for many friends. He said he loved and longed for the Old West and everything that goes with it, but that he would sacrifice it all for Mrs. Russell. Remember me telling you that Charlie Russell not only drew and painted, but he sculpted as well. 
Here in this photo, he is sculpting with a little piece of beeswax he carried in his pocket. As you can see, he has a very attentive and amazed audience. Charlie Russell continued to sculpt with wax and some of his creations were so incredible, they were made into bronze. Charles Marion Russell died in 1926 at the age of 62. During his lifetime, he completed approximately 4,000 works in oil, watercolor, and sculpture. His artwork is a history lesson on the Wild West, presented by one who loved his country, nature, and people, both native and immigrant. If you're ever in Fort Worth, Texas, I want to encourage you to come out to the stockyards and see these incredible beasts for yourself. You might even meet a real life cowboy. I also want to encourage you to go to the Amon Carter Art Museum and the Sid Richardson Museum. They have one of the largest collections of Charles Russell masterpieces. Thanks for tagging along with me and I want to remind you, stay safe and stay healthy. If you continue to watch our videos and you subscribe, I will continue to make story time and art activities and how to draws just for you. If you like our channel, you're going to love our High Gatsby Art History video series. It's taught by me and my little buddy Gatsby. Oh, have I got a story for you.